President, please be seated. Le président, veuillez vous asseoir. The court is now in session, and the floor is given to the national co-prosecutor to resume the presentation. National Court Mr. President, Your Honours, parties and the public, good afternoon. I am now turning to the persecution of Buddhists. As the accused, I also charged in district with religious persecution in relation to Buddhists. Before turning to forced marriage, I would like to briefly address the CPK policy banning Buddhism and the evidence as to what happened in regards to the pagodas, monks, and the practice of Buddhism in Tramkak during the DK regime. There can be no serious doubt that one of the policies implemented by the CPK leaders during the DK regime was the closing of pagodas, disrobing of monks, and prohibition of the practice of the Buddhist religion. The evidence is not based on rumors as argued by the defense, but on the personal experiences of the Cambodian people who lived through and survived the Khmer Rouge regime and who suffered the profound change in a cornerstone of Cambodian life when their local pagodas were closed, the monks disrobed, and they were no longer allowed to worship and practice their religion. Mr. President, Your Honours, you have heard hundreds of witnesses in this courtroom, and thousands more have been interviewed, and there is simply no credible evidence disputing that Buddhism was eliminated from Cambodian society during the democratic Cambodian regime. Your Honours, the we have filed with our trial brief a list of the witnesses from each zone and region of the democratic Cambodia who have provided evidence proving the elimination of Buddhism in their area, which is Annex E to our brief. The defense would seem to have you believe it was just a coincidence that every pagoda was closed and every monk deprived in every corner of the country. After the DK took power on 17 April 1975, it was not. It was a decision made by Pol Pot, Nguyen Chia, Kyo Som Phon, and the other top CBK leaders at the meetings they held in Phnom Penh after their 17 April victory, which, was, which policy was then communicated by the two top leaders at the mass meeting of CPK cadres held from the 20th to 25th of May 1975. Your Honours heard from 
one of the few surviving attendees at that meeting, that is former Sector 105, Secretary Sao Zarun, who confirmed that both Pol Pot and Nguyen talked about the closing of pagodas. Pol Pot and Nguyen avaient parlé de la fermeture des pagodes. Your honors also heard how Messieurs the juges, CPK leader's directive was implemented in Tramco district. Cette directive des dirigeants du PCK avait été mise en œuvre dans le district As de certified Tramcoc. by Bitchum, one of the local leaders who attended the 20th and 25th May 1975 meeting in Phnom Penh was the then secretary of Tramco district, Yekom, the daughter of Tamok. When she returned from that meeting, she convened a meeting of Tramcock cadres, at which she conveyed to the commune chiefs, the CPK leaders, on what was to happen with pagodas, monks, and Buddhism. Multiple witnesses from Tramcock testified to that meeting and to the ensuing implementation of that of the order, as at least 100 monks from throughout Takao province were gathered at the Ang Oraka Pagoda in Tramkak district and forced to disrobe. You heard from two of those monks. Vous avez entendu deux de ces moines. There is His uh, Reverence Aim Phuong, the Le head Venerable monk of Kampot province, and Kiel Both, both confirmed that they and together and the other gathered monks were forced to leave the monkhood slide 115. À cet endroit, ils ont été forcés de quitter In Aim Phuong's word, allow me to quote. Je vais citer les termes de Aim Phuong. We were told that you cannot be staying as a monk. Any monk should leave the monkhood or be deprived, and they will not allow anyone to be in the monkhood. I was told I should not have any conflict with Anka or Anka instruction, and that we all should be patient and Et que nous devions tous être patients des instructions. et suivre les instructions. Otherwise, we would be killed. Sinon, on serait tués. This event was also confirmed by local cadres and Ce residents, including Rio Son and former district messenger and Krangajan Gad Van Suen alias San. The evidence is clear that CPK cadres did implement this policy both in Trumka district and throughout Cambodia. The CPK leaders themselves announced in a 22nd this September 1975 party circular that 90 to 95% of the monks and Buddhist practices no longer existed. De pratique bouddhique, de pratique bouddhique At a plus. September 1978 study session led by Paul Potter Nguyen that was attended and testified to by Eslin One Chairman Duc, Paul Pot announced that the party had, had successfully eliminated Buddhism by making monks build dams Il a été annoncé que le and blend in the popular masses des barrages et en les fondant dans la masse populaire.
contemporaneous documents from Tramcock district also confirm the elimination of Buddhism. For example, a 31st August 1977 report from Liebo Commune reports the arrest of a local youth who complained, I quote, there is no Buddhism amongst school teachers or markets. Plus d'école, plus d'enseignants, ni de marché. Instead of places of peaceful worship, many pagodas became CPK security centers and killing sites. Mr. President, your honor, you have heard evidence on some of those uh, prisons during this trial. What Otokun in Gongmia district? where thousands of charm and new people were sent to their death. And what Barai John died next to the 1st January Dam. His Reverence Aim Peng testified that majority of pagodas in his region were turned into prison. And Ian Harris, the leading Ian researcher Harris, of Buddhism under the Khmer Rouge, found that 15 of the 21 district ed three education centers a in the southwest zone were housed in Pagoda. Centre de rééducation de district dans la zone sud-ouest était logé dans Pagoda. In the face of this overwhelming evidence, the Nunchia defense claims there was no policy prohibiting religion, and in support of this incredulous assertion, cite former Tramcourt District Secretary Pitcher. So let me end this section of our arguments by showing you what the witness, the defense, relies on actually testified in this courtroom. Please uh, project slide 118. Veuillez faire projeter la vidéo 118. Pitchum, the witness relied on by the defense, testified, Pitchum. and I quote. Le témoin sur lequel se fonde la défense a dit, je cite. Buddhism was eliminated Le because it was too gentle. Parce qu'il était trop doux. He testified. As regards the monks. What I can tell you is that they were defrocked. My idea at the time was that they should be kept, but I did not dare to say it loud enough to be heard. For fear, I did not dare to talk loudly. And he testified, allow me to quote, Kom, who was the chairperson of the party, gave the instructions on the demolition of Buddhist statues, and communes implemented it. Et les communes les ont appliquées. Your Honours, the accused are guilty of religious persecution of Buddhists. Now, sont I will de persécution religieuse, sont coupables de persécution de Bouddhistes pour motifs religieux. I will address the crimes of um, Je vais maintenant passer au I will crime. ask the permission from President to allow my colleagues to address the crime of forced marriage. De mariage forcé. President, yes, please, you can now proceed. La permission de donner la parole à mon collègue, le Président. Vous êtes autorisé. Thank you, Mr. President. Good afternoon, Mr. President, your honors, uh, everyone in and around the courtroom. Now I am uh, presenting the crime of uh, forced marriage. Pour toutes les personnes présentes dans le prétoire, maintenant je vais présenter le crime de mariage forcé. The CBKs believe that they could treat Ordinary Cambodians as property that the leaders could use as they please is further shown in the policy to force individuals to wed spouses chosen by the regime and to consummate the marriage. These policies constitute two separate crimes that are legally testified as crimes against humanity of other inhuman acts. First, for the forced marriage, and secondly, rape in those cases where the couple were coerced 
to have intercourse without the consent of one or both individuals. Tout d'abord, pour les mariages forcés et ensuite pour les viols, le couple était forcé d'avoir des rapports sexuels non consentis par l'une ou l'autre partie. The evidence in this trial has shown that the accused and other Khmer Rouge leaders sought to rapidly increase the population of Cambodia for agricultural and defense purposes by arranging marriages of people without their consent. Sans le consentement des intéressés. They would form revolutionary families that would be loyal only to Anka. Ils voulaient former des familles révolutionnaires qui ne seraient loyales qu'envers Anka. Men and women who often had not even met before were forced to wed and consummate those marriages against their will. The evidence has shown that this policy was implemented in every zone and autonomous sector of the country as well as in the RAK Center Military Division. Both Nguyen Chi and Kyu Som Phong promoted this forced marriage policy. Both accused affirmed that the CBK intended to increase the Cambodian population dramatically from approximately 8 million persons to 15 to 20 million persons within 5 to 10 years. And I would like to screen slide 1 to 8 in his own book. Kyu Som Phong noted that Philip Short was correct when he wrote, allow me to quote, Pol Pot did not intend to reduce the population. To the contrary, his aim was to increase the population by a factor of two or three. Specifically, he wanted the population of Cambodia to rise to 15 to 20 million within 10 years. Close quote. In 1978, Kyu Som spoke to 20,000 individuals, including representatives of the Revolutionary Army of Cambodia, imploring the cadres, allow me to quote, en implorant les cadres, to grasp cite, firmly and implement well the plan to increase the size of the population to its maximum so as to have 15 to 20 million people in the next 10 to 15 years. Nguyen Chi admitted in a 1981 interview that, I quote, democratic Cambodia has pursued a policy of increasing its population. Since 1975, democratic Cambodia has always required a rapid increase in its population. Thus, the four-year plan of 1977 and 1980 aimed at increasing our population to at least 15 million within five to ten years. Close quote. The party magazine Revolutionary flag, which Nguyen Chi has admitted he played a leading role in producing, also endorsed the rapid increase in the population to 15 to 20 million people. This revolutionary flag reproduced a speech by Pol Pot that stated, quote, Our population has increased beyond what it was before the coup. But this speed is not yet sufficient when compared to the objective of the party, the aim to increase the population to 15 to 20 million within 10 to 15 years.
de 15 à 20 millions d'ici 10 à 15 ans. Fin de citation. Revolutionary flag elsewhere stated, quote, dit également, we need from 15 to 20 million people to meet the needs of our land, de personnes pour unquote. répondre aux besoins de notre pays. Fin de citation. To achieve this goal of doubling a population that was systematically being starved, qui était systématiquement affamée, surmenée de travail et exécutée, would require an unprecedented increase un taux de in the birth rates. Sans précédent. In pursuit of these unrealistic Pour goals, objectifs irréalistes, marriages would be arranged les mariages étaient and arrangés approved by the CPK. et approuvés par le PCK. Nunchie admitted to Nunchie his chosen biographer, Ted Sambat, that, Sambat, quote, que, je cite, the man always wants to choose a beautiful girl. So that's why we forced them to get married. Nous les and Anka chose the wife. Et c'est Anka qui choisissait l'épouse ou la fille. Fin de citation. The center's forced marriage policy was implemented throughout Democratic Cambodia, and the marriage ceremonies were presided over by officials from various echelons, including unit chairperson, village or cooperative chiefs, commune chiefs, district officials, sector officials, and zone de and military officials. De zone, ainsi que les responsables militaires. Any claim that this policy was not emanating from the center is wholly selon laquelle, cette belied by the fact that it was carried out by individuals at the highest echelons of the party. The court heard from civil party Giedieb who worked in the Ministry of Commerce, which Kiu Somphon had authority over. She testified that Kiu Somphon made a speech to her and other female workers in the Ministry of Commerce. Et à l'attention des autres ouvrières du ministère du Commerce. Now I would like to play a clip of what she said. Je vais faire projeter une vidéo de ses propos. De sa déposition. Uh, please, uh, screen video number five. Video numéro cinq, s'il vous plaît. You told the chamber that you met his twice, twice once at the meeting at Unalam Pagoda. I want to ask you that during the meeting at Unalam Pagoda, what did he talk about? De quoi a-t-il parlé? He said that all female cadres needed to work for the state and those with the age above 19 from all ministries needed to be arranged to get married. We should not keep them unmarried. When he said that male and female youths needed to be arranged to get married, did he say that from what age that they should be arranged to get married? Did he say that they should be married voluntary, voluntarily, without any force? Did he mention about this issue? He did not say about whether the marriage was based on love or not, but he just simply said this should be arranged to get married for the female youth with the age of above 19 and the male youth with the age of 25 years old. He asked all ministries to arrange marriage for all female and male youth, so we should not give them all without marriage. Only those who were still young should be kept unmarried. He said that. Voilà ce dit. When he said that all the female and female youths should be arranged to get married, did he explain the reason why they should get married? De sexe féminin et masculin devaient voir leur mariage arrangé. A-t-il expliqué pourquoi?
He said that they should be, they should get réponse, married, il a dit so that they would produce children afin de produire des to defend the country. That is what he Et said. Assurer ainsi la défense du pays. Voilà ce qu'il a dit. Chediep testified Chediep that shortly after Kizom Ford made those remarks, que peu après, the women in her group were pas, married. Les femmes de son groupe ont été mariées. Indeed, the evidence shows multiple effet, reports of mass weddings occurring in the Ministry of Commerce. Les mariages collectifs qui avaient eu lieu Another example is Pan Him, a female commerce cadre, who testified that there were 21 couples in her wedding, and that, I quote, uh, this is slide 139. I was told that despite my refusal, Anka would assign to me to have a husband, and if I violated the discipline, then I had to be careful, close quote. She then described the night she was informed Ensuite, she was to be married. Allow me to quote. One night, mariée, je cite, une nuit, the chief of female chef unit de from des his ministry came to my ministry at about 9 p.m. And I was called and asked, Comrade, Anka wanted demandé, to marry you. What did you have to say about it? The one who proposed to marry you was Arat from Ministry in Charge Celui of International Commerce. Rat, and I replied that I was not mature yet. I wanted to work. Mûr, I did not want to marry any man. Je ne voulais épouser aucun homme. And the female chief said that Et le chef de l'unité des femmes no matter what you said, you have to agree with Anka. And Anka will organize avec, avec the marriage for you. You have to respect Anka and adhere to the principles or direction set by Anka. Rousseau, a deputy chief Rousseau, of state warehouses in the Ministry of Commerce provided evidence that beginning in 1977, ministry received a plan of, allow me to quote, strict measures, close quote, requiring that 100 couples be married each month. Rousseau himself was forcibly married, and he was required to facilitate additional forced marriages of hundreds of couples. Some marriages were even conducted by Commerce Minister Van Rutt and his deputy Ngadiu alias Hong. Forced marriages were likewise carried out at a ministry under Nunji's oversight, that is, the Ministry of Social Affairs. I would like to screen uh, slide 142. Tosi Thorn testified, quote, people of my age who were in their 20s, either from the hospital or the Ministry of Social Affairs, they were arranged to get married by Anka. It was Anka who was the one deciding who, whom to marry, or who to marry whom, close quote. 
fin de citation. First marriages were personally Les mariages forcés ont été and personnellement by other CPK leaders who were members of the accused joint criminal enterprise, including South Zone Secretary and Standing Committee Member Tamok, Central Zone Secretary Kaipo, Minister of Social Affairs in Europe, and her deputy Sun Falcon alias Su, as well as a number of military leaders at the divisional level. Ainsi qu'un certain nombre de chefs militaires de la division. Moreover, the CBK's plus, central policy document on family buildings pronounced that in regard to families, allow me to quote, familles, no matter cite, the outcome of the organization and the collective's assessments and decisions, they must be absolutely respected. Close quote. There respectées. is therefore 